The other thing about being a composer is the follow-up. And that's something I had to work on very hard um, as I got older. Um, you get a piece, you get a premiere, maybe they play it a couple of times. How do you get other people to play it? How do you get it heard? I mean, you know, everybody's like, social media is great, yeah, we have YouTube and everything, but there still has to be focus to your approach and your conversations with people, and you can't let up, really, in your own, on your own behalf. That doesn't mean you have to be sort of arrogant, although I, I think it actually helps. But, <laughs> you know, you, you have to be, yeah, you, you have to be at least convinced enough of your own value so that other people will value what you do. And I can't, I can't stress this more because we, we actually, we were, we're kind of a, a small group of people in our culture and we do have friends, we're friends with each other, but we do kind of work in isolation. And it helps to have people around you who believe in your work and who want to do your work. And the more performances you get of a piece, to get back to this idea of whether something is, works because uh, it doesn't work because you wrote it wrong or because they're not playing it well. The way to find that out is to get multiple performances of the piece because what happens then is you establish a performance practice. You know, and you don't have to be there all the time. People go, oh yeah, that's, that's Burmell. I know how Burmell goes. You know, and I've heard this and I've heard that. That doesn't mean that they're going to play it the same way. What, the, what it means is there becomes a certain familiarity with the general aesthetic of your work. Because the notation is, as you know, no matter how good you are at it, is really not as precise as we would like it to be. I always am now writing for a specific voice. Uh, you know, when you're, when you're a beginning composer, sometimes you write generically. You know, you're, you're told to write on brass quintet. You know, there are all kinds of brass players. Um, and I don't do that at all anymore, and I think the music is better because of that. And one of the things I really advocate for is for you to latch on to performers very, very early, very early in your careers. Um, the, the, the cellist, Norman Fisher, do you know him? Mm -hmm. He uh, teaches now at Rice. He was in my freshman dorm section at Oberlin. You know, back in 1898. <laughs> Actually, it was 1967, if you need to know the absolute truth, which mm -hmm. is almost, almost, just almost as unbelievable, right? <laughs> and we were uh, literally, back then you didn't have private baths. You had a, a large row of sinks, and you would do your morning ablutions. And he was standing next to me, and he said, Hi, I'm Norman. I'm a cellist. And I said, Hi, I'm Bob. I'm a composer. He said, Write me a piece. Immediately. And uh, that's sort of the secret to his success, first of all. He was in the Concord Quartet for 15 years. And they recorded more new music during that period than almost anybody before or since. And also, it's part of the secret to whatever uh, satisfaction and success I've had, which is that I've collected and continue to collect really great players. It's harder to collect uh, conductors. Conductors have lots of, particularly orchestral conductors, they have lots of different things going on. You know, um, but it's still worthwhile. And remember, some of the people you're going to school with or have gone to school with are going to be those people. I keep telling people, in 20 years, you're going to be running everything. Why? Because there won't be anybody else. It will be you. 